So we're going to solve each of these equations and what we're going to do, our method, our method is that we're going to try and write both sides as a power with the same base. So doing that, looking at this first one in A, we've got 4 to the x equals 1 over 256. So we're going to check our 4 and 256 in the same column on our powers chart. So I'll go back to our powers chart here from before. Do you see 4 and 256 in the same column? Yes. It happens twice, doesn't it? It can be in our first column here, powers of 2, and also as our powers of 4. So you could choose either one to work with. I'm going to keep it as powers of 4, because then I don't need to change anything on the left-hand side. But I can write 256 as 4 to the power of 4. So we want to write both sides as a power with the same base. We're not quite there yet, because on the right-hand side, my power of 4 is in the bottom of a fraction. Is there any way that you could move this up so it's just 4 to the power of something? You could do 4 to the power of 0. Oh, and you could change the, the 1 to a 4 to the power of 0 and then use your exponent laws to subtract. Or you might remember your negative exponent laws that anything, anytime you want to move something from denominator to numerator or vice versa, you can do so with a negative exponent. So here we've got 4 to the negative 4. Now that our powers have the same base on both sides. This has to equal, and in this case, well, that's pretty hard to figure out. Oh, x is equal to negative 4. So right now, going from this step to this step, we're not using any algebraic technique other than observation and logic, that if the powers are the same, then their exponents must be the same. If their bases are the same, then the exponents must be the same, and we're using that to solve. So in part B, this is similar to one we did earlier, we got 27 and 9. They're in the same column as their powers of 3. So I can write 27 as 3 cubed. There would still be an x outside of that. So it's a good habit whenever you're changing something from 27 to 3 cubed or 9 to 3 squared to put bra brackets around that just so that you have all of your exponent laws follow from that. So I still would have 2x minus 1 outside. Yes? Well, if I did it straight, so if I just wrote this, there would be points taken off because it doesn't quite make sense because that 2 See how that 2 needs to get distributed? OK. So it's changing this and then multiplying it out here, we're going to get 3 to the 3x. If you went from here to here, no problem. OK. Here to here, again, they would probably not take off a mark if you jump that step. But if you jump that step and make a mistake, they may give you no marks whatsoever. So. It's a good chance. There is a fairly good chance of a mental math error if you went right from here to here. So I would say show that extra step because you might not distribute your 2 correctly or something like that. And now they are mathematically or communication wise, at this point, since I'm not doing something algebraic to both sides. I actually don't m mind like giving a little statement like so 3x is equal to 4x minus 2. 
just, it just, you know, the so kind of, to me, it tells me I've used some sort of logic to get from this step to this step. And that little word, I think, helps clarify that. No Greek symbol for sewing. No you don't draw, make one up. Therefore. Yeah, you could do therefore. And then, I mean, that would be nicer because, right, we've already got these three dots here. There we go. We don't need, no need that. Perfect. Therefore, 3x equals 4x minus 2. Move things around. Move the x's to this side. Move the 2 over to this side. And voila, we've got our answer that x could equal 2. So notice we had to use some of our exponent laws already. The main one that we had was what happens if you have a power to a power. So I've got a little page here that's sort of a review of your exponent laws. The first one, the one that we've been using, a power to a power, right? That's where you multiply. And in green, I have an example of something that is that. If I have 5 squared cubed, that'd be 5 to the 6th. You can multiply those. x to the m times x to the n. If the bases are the same and you're multiplying two powers, you can add the exponents. Do you remember that? Like 3 squared times 3 to the 7? 3 to the 9? Can you still see it if I do this? Or does it get too small at the back? It's good? So if you divide, you subtract your exponents. Negative exponent laws move things from numerator to denominator, denominator to numerator. We've already talked about anything to the power of 0 being 1, except if it's 0 to the 0. If you have two things multiplied inside of your power, then that power applies to both of them. So here I've got 2 cubed times 7 to the power of 3. That would be 2 to the 9 times 7 to the 3. If you're dividing and you have the power, this is basically 6 and 7 are identical, just one is multiplying inside, the other one is dividing inside. Square root, do you remember square root is the power of a half? In fact, any root, like cube root would be a power of one third, a fourth root, power of one quarter. And then if you had something like x cubed inside, well, that would stay there, but you'd still have that 1 quarter. So 8, 9, and 10 are basically all the same, just little slight variations of them. So considering all of those, try 3, 4, 5, and 6 right now.